If, if I had to pick a single name that I like the most, or for the most, would be a voluntarist. And voluntarism is the idea that all human interaction should be on a voluntary basis, or not at all. And that voluntarily is how just about everybody deals with everybody in everyday life, all the time, every business, every person, with the only exceptions being you know, robbers, rapists, murderers, and governments. And government interactions aren't voluntary. Governments tell people you have to do what we tell you or we're going to hurt you. Robbers say we're going to take your stuff or we're going to hurt you. Rapists say we're going to do what we want with you or we're going to hurt you. Why does... Everybody knows that murderers and rapists and robbers are bad people because they use violence against peaceful people. Why don't people apply that same standard to governments? And I think they should. And so if I had to choose a single word that... I would like to define myself would be a voluntarist. About the freedoms, so yesterday you asked Bobby Lee while he was on the stage that um, whether PTC is likely to bring freedom to the world or BCH, and I assume this was more of a personal question for both of you, right? But do you really think it matters which cryptocurrency we bring freedom to the world? No, I don't care which one it does as long as we get more economic freedom for the entire world. I'm a fan of anything that's useful, but at this point I'm much more bullish about Bitcoin Cash than I am about the BTC version of Bitcoin bringing more economic freedom to the world because a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system has the ability to do that. A peer-to-peer -peer electronic store of value or whatever the BTC people are trying to create now, I don't see how that brings a path to more economic freedom to the world. So I wish the BTC people good luck with their project, but it's not the Bitcoin described in the white paper. It's not the Bitcoin described or envisioned by Satoshi Nakamoto. And it's not a tool that I see a way that it can be used to bring more economic freedom to the world. That's why I'm busy promoting Bitcoin Cash today. So the, the division inside the crypto industry, therefore, is kind of big. And don't you think that in order to like change the outer world, to bring freedom to the world, um, how can this happen if crypto people cannot find consensus with each other? So I think you have to understand the economics. So we just got to see earlier this morning a speech by Charlie Lee. And the title of his speech, I believe, was the intrinsic value of right. cryptocurrencies. And then he listed a couple of the things there. It just shows that he has absolutely no economics background to even speak to that sort of thing at all. There is no such thing as intrinsic value. People love to say that gold has intrinsic value. But ask yourself, if there were no human beings on the earth, would gold have any value? And the answer is no. The value Probably is in the no. mind of the person beholding the object. The value isn't in the object itself. The value is in the mind of the person looking at the gold or looking at the Bitcoin or looking at whatever it is that people are using. And so there's no such thing as intrinsic value. And then he listed off the reasons why cryptocurrencies have intrinsic value. And one of the things that he listed was the production cost. And I don't know if you've read any Karl Marx, but Karl Marx's big thing was the labor theory of value and saying that if you put a bunch of labor into something, that gives it value. But that's been just proven, you know, 100 plus years ago. If the labor theory of value is true, mud pies would be worth just as much as apple pies if you put the same amount of labor into producing them. But of course, apple pies are more useful than mud pies. And so just because people spend a bunch of effort to produce a cryptocurrency doesn't give it any value in and of itself. So if Charlie had paid any attention, even in his high school economics class, he'd know that his, his talk was a bunch of economic nonsense. I'd like to clear, I'm, I'm attacking the ideas that he promoted. Right. Charlie Lee's arguments against Bitcoin Cash were to call it things like Bcash, which is not an argument, that's name calling. Okay. So there's a very, very big difference between name calling and giving actual reasons and evidence and, and logic as to why something is wrong. So like the example I gave with mud pies versus apple pies, right. if the same amount of labor goes into both based on Charlie Lee's thing that he was promoting down there, they would both have value. But no, the, the labor theory of value is absolute nonsense. And that's what he was promoting on stage as one of the reasons that Bitcoin has value, because it takes labor to produce a Bitcoin. That's absolute nonsense. So what do you think is more important, the blockchain technology adoption, it being like widespread massive adoption or, it, or the price growth? And do you think these things are mutually related? Yeah, they're, they're definitely related. So the usefulness of a cryptocurrency is what makes the price grow. So price of everything is set by supply and demand. So if there's lots and lots of demand for this type of laptop and the supply is limited, the price will go up. The same with cryptocurrencies. If there's a lot of demand and the supply is limited, the price goes up. What creates the demand is the usefulness. So the more useful we can make a particular cryptocurrency, the more people will want to use it. And the more people want to use it, that increases the demand. If the supply stays the same, the price goes up. And that's why we saw the price of Bitcoin initially go up because there was limited supply and people demanded to start using it. The price went, went crazy. And I think the same is going to happen with uh, whatever cryptocurrency is the most useful as a currency because people use currencies every day of their life for every, every single financial transaction.
Do you distinguish the blockchain technology as it is and the cryptocurrencies? The blockchain technology is the underlying. I mean, like the voting on blockchain, land registry. That stuff's interesting, but I think we already know what the killer app for blockchain technology is, and the killer app is cash. Okay. And that's what made Bitcoin popular to begin with. And I think they'll do other things like land registry and maybe, you know, automobile registry and who knows what. There's lots of different things people can do, but cash is the killer app, and it's it's here, and we, we can start using it. And uh, the Bitcoin.com wallet is a fantastic tool that for people that haven't used it and people that are new that maybe hear this if they go to free.bitcoin.com we give free bitcoin cash to anybody who visits that website it's not a lot mm -hmm. but it shows the power of bitcoin cash we give like seven cents worth of bitcoin cash so why do you think the adoption is going so slow and why don't we see that many um use cases right now so i think the adoption of cryptocurrency is ground to a halt by the misguided economic policies of the btc supporters where they openly said they wanted the fees to be high and the transactions to be like slow and unreliable well when something's slow expensive and unreliable surprise surprise people aren't going to use it and we saw bitcoin that used to have all sorts of adoption and people you know rushing to integrate it the adoption ground to a halt and then it diffused into a thousand and one different altcoins now and the market's kind of searching for which altcoin is going to have the biggest network effect and the most people on it and i think bitcoin cash is positioned to be that that altcoin or that coin but uh you never know until it actually happens but we're busy promoting it at bitcoin.com you said you'll never know but uh, you never know until after it happens you never know for right. sure because right. um uh, there was a panel yesterday and the guys were discussing like how many gener generations will it take to see the massive adoption like relatively massive and bob lee said it will take like one or two generations do you think that we will see that massive adoption? generations of people or generations of cryptocurrencies of people i think that's what he meant <laughs> um so I'm a big fan of Ray Kurzweil, who's in charge of all the AI at Google. And one of the things that he says is that uh, the amount of change, we overestimate the amount of change in the short term, but we underestimate the amount of change in the long term. And I think that's kind of true. Day to day, it feels like the industry is progressing so slowly, but on a slightly, if you step back, you know, five years or 10 years, the amount of change is absolutely massive. And I think we'll see that in the forthcoming adoption of cryptocurrencies.